In this video, we are going to do a double integral example using a change of coordinates or a substitution. So I want to evaluate this double integral. So let's get this started together. And then I'm going to give you a chance to pause it and see if you can continue it. So one of the indicators that I might try a change of coordinates is doing this antiderivative is quite complicated. Like it'd be a whole lot simpler if I just had the square root of like just x or just y here. And if this thing squared was just, was just like y squared or just x squared. So that's one of the indicators I might want to try a change of coordinates. So when I want to do a change of coordinates, I first need to sketch this region of integration. So let's draw our x and y axes. So let's draw our y axis and our x axis. And the inner integral is a dy integral. So this is a y equals 0. And this is y equals 1 minus x. And when I draw y equals 1 minus x, that's a line where the y-intercept is 1 and the slope is negative 1. So it's a downward sloping. So y equals 1 minus x. And the intercepts are at 1 and 1 here. y equals 0 is just a horizontal line. It's the x-axis. So it goes through the y value 0. So that's y equals 0. OK, so the y equals 0, that's the bottom curve. y equals 1 minus x, that's the upper curve. And then the x limits of integration are from 0 to 1. So I'm in between when x is 0 and when x is 1. So we're talking about this region. I'll call it r, this triangular region here. OK. So I'm going to need to convert this region using some substitution into a new region on what we call the uv plane. We're going to have new variables, u and v. But what do we substitute? So this is where I want to pause the video and give you a chance to try this. So pause the video for about five minutes, five minutes at least. These substitution problems are quite long. So pause it and try it in three, two, one, pause it. OK, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it to try it. Let's talk about it. OK, so what do we substitute? Inside of this square root, I see x plus y. Inside of the parentheses, I see y minus 2x. It'd be so nice if one of these things was just u and one of them was v. And that is what I'm going to substitute. So let's let u be equal to x plus y. And I'll let v be equal to y minus 2x. We already kind of talked about that earlier, and that's one of the tip-offs that I wanted to try that substitution. OK, so now I'm going to think about my what I call my xy equations. Whoops, xy equations for the boundary of this initial region, r, and then try to convert them to uv equations for the boundary and the new region I'm going to call that g for the boundary of g. Okay so what are my initial boundary equations? Well I have y equals 1 minus x and what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to rearrange this because I notice that this is x plus y equals 1 and actually seeing that this boundary curve has an x plus y and there's an x plus y in the integral, that's a strong indicator that I probably want to let that be one of my substitutions. OK, so that's another indicator that I should try that. OK, so if I look at that equation, x plus y equals 1, I have that. And well, because x plus y equals u, this just becomes u equals 1. Nice, so I get u equals 1. Awesome, OK. My next boundary curve, well, we had y equals 0. So y equals 0. And I'll convert this to u's and v's in two ways. So first, I'll call this method 1. Method 1. What I can do is take this equation and substitute it, plug it in to these substitutions. So if I plug in y equals 0 in for both of these, where the y's go, in the first one, I get that u equals x, x plus 0. And the second one, we get v equals negative 2x. Okay, and then so based on that, 
if you plug in that u equals x into this one, we're going to get that v equals negative 2u. And that's the new equation. v equals negative 2u. Okay? There's one more boundary curve to go, which is we have this vertical line. And that vertical line, whoops, I don't mean to put an arrow. That vertical line, that's x equals 0. So if I do the same thing, if I take x equals 0, and I plug it in to the substitutions where the x's are, for the first one, I would get that u equals y. The second one, I'd get v equals y. Well, if both of these equal y, that means v equals u. OK, nice. So I have my boundary equations for my region G. OK, so I want to show another way to do this. So method two. Method two. Method two is it's a bit more systematic. Um, but it, it can be longer. But it, it, I think it's helpful to see as well. OK, so the other way is in these equations, let's isolate for x and y. So to do that, I'm going to just copy this second equation. Well, OK, what I'm going to notice is both of them have a y. So let's subtract the two equations. Let's subtract. So if I do that on the left, I'll get u minus v. And on the right, I'll get x minus negative 2x, which becomes 3x. And then divide the 3, I get u minus v over 3 equals x. OK, and I have this equation for what x equals. I will highlight this. So now I can take this and plug it back into one of these equations. So if I do it in that first one, I'll get that. Let me isolate y first. I'll get y equals u minus x, which is u minus this fraction, u minus v over 3. And if I simplify that, this becomes 2u plus v over 3. Okay, so let me highlight this. y equals 2u plus v over 3. So, okay, let's take these equations and now use them to plug in to my boundary curve equations. So if I plug into y equals 0, I know what y is. I will get that 2u plus v over 3, because that's what y is. That should be equal to 0. And then if I multiply the 3 over, I'll get 2u plus v equals 0. And if you isolate v, you get this thing. v equals negative 2u. It's awesome. I'm getting the same thing. If I plug an x into here, I would get u v minus v over 3. That's x. That should be equal to 0. And then multiply the 3 over, I'll get u minus v equals 0. And then that becomes v equals u. OK, so awesome. So I'll get the same thing either way. And you might wonder, like, well, you know, what's the purpose of this? This just seemed longer than this first way. It turns out that if you do this, it ends up being a bit more systematic to get there. But also, I'm going to need these anyways when I do the Jacobian. So I will need these equations regardless. OK, so let's graph my new region. So u equals 1. So u is kind of like my x-axis. And so u equals 1 would go through 1 on that axis. And there would be a vertical line. So u equals 1. Oh, let me draw that better. A vertical line through that point. Vertical line. u equals 1. v equals u is like y equals x. It's going to be a line of slope 1 through the origin. So this is v equals u. Let me move this equation. Let me just create some space here. And then v equals negative 2u. That would be a line of slope negative 2 through the origin. So a little bit steeper going down. OK, that's a v equals negative 2u. Awesome. OK, so now here is this new region, which, I can, which I'm calling G. It's a, another triangular region. All right, so we are now ready to find our Jacobian. So our Jacobian, j of u comma v, Remember that that equals a determinant where I do the partial of x with respect to u, the partial of x with respect to v, and then the partial of y with respect to u, and the partial of y with respect to v. So we got to take those partials. And to find those, I use my 
equations once I had isolated the x and the y. So the partial of x with respect to u is one-third. With respect to v is negative one-third. And the partials of y, well, with respect to u, I'll get two-thirds. And with respect to v, I get one-third. Oh, whoops, don't mean to erase one-third there. So now to do the determinant, remember, I multiply these two terms first. That gives me 1 over 9. And then I subtract. We subtract what we get when you multiply the other two terms, the other two diagonals, which gives me negative 2 over 9. But then if I add these, I get 3 over 9, which simplifies to just 1 third. OK, and that's my Jacobian. So now we are ready to convert our double integral using this change of coordinates, using this substitution. So when I do that, I'll get a new double integral. I'll give myself some space where I'll get the square root of, and remember, x plus y just became u. So I get the square root of u. And this thing in the parentheses, well, that's what we were saying v was. So I'm going to get v squared. So I've substituted my su substitution into the function. That should get multiplied by the absolute value of the Jacobian. So the absolute value of one third, well, that's just one third. And then I have to decide, well, am I going to do dv and then du? Or am I going to do du and then dv? So which way am I going to slice this region vertically? Or am I going to slice it horizontally? So I notice that if I do it horizontally, the curve on the left changes from this line, this line to this line. So if I did it that way, I'd have to split it into two double integrals at this u-axis. And that's kind of annoying. But if I slice it vertically, the function on the bottom is always this equation. The function on the top is always given by this equation. So that's going to be nicer. If I slice it vertically, that's like a dy dx, or in this case, dv du, then for the lower limit of integration, I need this bottom equation with the v isolated. And it already is, so that's v equals, whoops, v equals negative 2u. The upper limit of integration is based on the upper curve with the v isolated. That's just v equals u. And then for the outer integral, the values of u are based on what's the smallest value of u, which is 0, and the biggest, which is 1. So u goes from 0 to 1. And now from here, we are ready to do this integral. So OK, one thing I want to mention is, because these limits of integration are not just all constants, I cannot decouple this. Even though I do have a product of something with just u's and then something with just v's, I cannot decouple it. But I can take this constant and move it to the front. So doing that, I would get that 1 third in front. And then my integral from 0 to 1. I get root u times, this becomes v to the third over 3. And then I got to plug in v equals negative 2u and v equals u. And then we got that du on the outside. So now if I plug in, I get 1 third times my integral from 0 to 1. If I plug in v, if I plug in u for this v, whoops, we'll get square root of u times u cubed over 3. And then I got to subtract what I get when I plug negative 2 in for that v. So that's going to give me root u times, this will become negative 8u to the third over 3. And then we have a du. OK, so maybe it's looking a little complicated, but these are like terms. I have a square root of u, u cubed for both of these. And these will combine, and I'll actually get 9 square root of u, u to the third over 3, which becomes 3. And then this is u to the 7 halves, if I use some exponent properties. And now I can do, I can do my antiderivative. Anti so I have that 1 third in front. I can also move this 3 to the front. And then the antiderivative of u to the 7 halves well, I add 1 to the power, u to the 9 halves. And then I divide by that power, but that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, 2 over 9. And then i got to plug in the 0 and the 1. So the 3's will cancel. 
And when you plug in, you'll get 2 over 9 times 1 to any power is just 1, so 2 over 9. And then minus, if you plug in 0, you'll get 0, which is just 2 over 9. All right, and there we have it. So some of the key takeaways in this problem are one of the big tip-offs to try this change of coordinates was that this function is difficult to integrate directly. But if I notice that if I let u be equal to the thing inside of this square root and v be equal to the thing inside of this thing getting squared, it drastically simplifies this function. That's a big tip-off to try a substitution. In terms of our goals for this section, we finished our last goal, recognizing when a change of coordinates is helpful.